This program is brought to you in association with First National Bank of Botswana. FNB, how can we help you? Success is a choice. A testament from our guest, Mwemiri Sinuelo, co-founder and chief executive officer of Crackett Tuition Botswana. The center helps school-going children and teens do better academically. This is a project that Mwemiri holds dear, as he had learning difficulties as a child, having taken much longer to learn how to read and write. He lived most of his childhood with his grandmother, tossing between the home village in Muchudi and the farm, while his mother was in Khaburuni trying to bring home the bacon. Moemiria says that because he did not have what is called breakthrough before primary school, he was not considered a smart child, even though in the end he passed his primary level, junior certificate and Cambridge exams with flying colours. Those assertions are part of the reason why we have Crack It was on it today, whose origins are found somewhere in the year 2011, when Mwemidi was only 19 years old awaiting his BGCSE results. He was later admitted at the University of Botswana for a Bachelor of Sciences program, which he unfortunately failed and discontinued from after just one semester. Despite this huge misfortune, Mwemidi continued with Crack It, focusing even more on it to make it a thriving business. In the spirit of recognizing that sometimes it is not that a student is not the sharpest tool in the shed, but rather needs more time and attention to grasp concepts, Crack It Botswana expanded to enroll students who did not do well enough to progress after sitting for either junior certificate or Cambridge exams. The center offers tutoring services to these students to help them prepare for resets. To date, there are over 50 Crackett centers around the country and another in South Africa. The CEO attests that they have also published a series of revision booklets to further aid learning. Well, here's Mwemedi Senuelo to offer more insight into the journey to Crackett, Botswana. Crackett started in the year 2011. Immediately when I finished Form 5, I volunteered at Nadedi Secondary School on the guidance and counseling department. And uh, during my interaction with students, they developed, uh, they started requesting that I tutor them in the sciences and maths. And then over time, even their parents called and asked me to tutor their kids in sciences and maths. So I saw a business opportunity there and I talked to the school head and he gave us a, a permission to use the, one of the classes to start those tutorial classes. And from there, um, as the demand from other students from other schools came in, uh, I ended up having been forced to move out of Naledi so that we moved to a, a different place. And uh, my mother, being a very understanding parent, she allowed us to use her living room to start those classes. And uh, school came along, I started university. And uh, because I was already running a business, I couldn't balance between running a business and being a student, and being a BSc student is a very demanding course. I had to, I spent most time doing business and it ended up costing me to end up getting a fail and discontinue. And having gotten a fail and discontinued, I decided to say, let me do business full time and I'll do school part time. Let us talk about the pressures that you may have endured, um, you know, after making the decision to not go back to school after your, fail your failure. Um, how did you handle that? I mean, there's certain levels of expectations from both our families and society as far as having a higher education. It was quite uh, much from my mother because her colleagues at work were like, uh, your child just got 45 points in Form 5 and uh, he can't forfeit the opportunity to get a free government scholarship to have a university degree. So. That, that was the kind of pressure that uh, she, she, she kept on piling on me. And I uh, ended up just applying for readmission. But uh, every time I had to apply for, for sponsorship, I, I would not do that part so that I will show her the admission letter and I would not do the scholarship part. I had the pressure to fulfill the societal expectation of having a university degree. Um, 
yeah, you know, having schooled many years and uh, the ultimate goal being to, to say, okay, one day you should have a degree and it will qualify you to get you a good job. But uh, after I read a book called uh, Rich Dad Poor Dad, it was just talking about how to be a business person. And uh, my thinking became different from after reading that book to think, really, um, as, as important as getting university qualification is, but sometimes you can become an employer, you can become a business owner. So that is why I, I, I had the confidence that uh, I could build a business and uh, take care of my studies later or do them part-time instead of doing them full-time as it is a norm. Mwemedi, as someone who uses that misfortune to inspire others, are you not afraid that, you know, your messaging might be misconstrued by some impressionable youth to mean that they don't necessarily need um, education to thrive in life, whether professionally or in that business? I think some young people might look at me and think uh, not having an education you can do, you can make it without an education. That is true. However, um, circumstances are different for all of us. And for an ordinary young person to think, okay, I can quit school and focus on music, I can quit school and focus on football or any other thing, it might be risky to say that and have not have a backup plan to say, what if I don't make it in the career that I'm trying to choose? So it's very important to look at those factors to say, okay, if you are, to, you are going to take the, this path, really you have to be sure that you have a real idea that can sustain you, that can work and uh, if it doesn't work out there should be a clear way that you could uh, go forward and that is why right now i'm studying to be a pilot i know that is my backup career even if you look at my journey i recognize the importance of education in the sense that i was working with people who came from university who were knowledgeable so I had to learn management, I had to learn leadership, I had to learn accounting so that I could relate with those people, I could be at the same level with them, so that when they, we talk, we can talk in the same language, we can make decisions together. Let us come back to the centre. You've ensured that there are counselling services available for students. Why did you make sure to have that department available? Majority of our students are students who are read, writing Form 5 and there are also those who are writing Form 3. So having had them, the students who maybe have, may have challenges, that like the slow learners, and uh, sometimes having failed Form 3 or having failed Form 5, it means they come demoralized, they come with low self-confidence. So introducing counseling service helps us to, to mold them, to inspire them, to improve their confidence, to give themselves a second chance, to believe them themselves again, to say, I have been given this second chance by my parent and cricket. I'm going to make the best use of it by studying hard, by working hard and believing that I can do it. You've managed to reach the furthest corners of Botswana with cricket and have expanded into South Africa. What other prospects of growth are you exploring that you see as furthering your mission or objectives? Having achieved uh, or having been able to reach out to reach 53 locations in Botswana, we also managed to uh, have one place in South Africa, in Johannesburg. And uh, going forward, we are, we are op will be opening soon in Namibia. We have just sold a deal with a local partner in Namibia and uh, we are going to be introducing our franchising model there. So people who are interested in becoming franchisee and running cricket in Namibia, they will be allowed to, to, to come into and partner with us in that way. And uh, we are going to also take our products. We have books here. We are going to take them and uh, uh, edit them to, to be able to fulfill the syllabus that is being offered in Namibia. In the end, when it's all said and done, what would you like to be known for? What do you hope to leave as your legacy? I would like to be remembered as someone who changed the education system to make it to be relevant to today's times. Uh, looking at our current model of education really, it doesn't prepare 
the graduate or the student much for the real life, for, 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 for the work life. Uh, what uh, the majority of the content is what is useful knowledge, but it, it is the practicality of it is less. So I would want to introduce an education system that is very practical, that prepares students from a young age, even from primary, that we could have students who are tech savvy, students who are you know, understand what is the different career paths, different career, career lines, and they could actually have an idea of what they want to be from a young age. That could be instilled around from primary level. They could have uh, shadows, career shadows of what they want to be. They explore at that age. Really, that is the, uh, the, the, the education model that I would aspire to have and to see Botswana adopting, to see the whole world adopting.